Hello and welcome to geek to me Crafts. Today I have a tutorial for you. We are making an ornament of the child, also known as Baby Yoda. The supplies that you're going to need for this are a size F hook, which is a 3.75 millimeter. You are also going to need some safety eyes. I use the Fab Lab brand. The eyes for this particular project are going to be in a six millimeter. I showed there a 12 millimeter. You'll also need a yarn needle and a pair of very sharp scissors. Optional is a piece of pastel. I use pink and those will be for the tinting of the inside of Baby Yoda's ears. The yarn that I use is Red Heart brand and in Cafe Latte I use for the base part of the little doll and then I use the same brand in a frosted, um, frosty green color. So to begin, we will start with a magic circle. If you don't know how to do a magic circle, you can pause this video and watch how I do it here, or there's tons of videos out there on YouTube that you can go and find. Comment below if you would like for me to do a basics of um, crochet in the round, and I would be glad to put one of those together. So the first thing you're gonna do in your magic circle is to single crochet six. And this is in the American style, so a single crochet is simply a pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. So I'm going to single crochet six in the magic ring. And then I will pull it closed by pulling the tail. In this pattern, I do not do a slip so stitch to one, join. I just I am continue here just counting to make sure that I am in inserting the, the hook into the sixth stitch. And I will go through both loops. For the full first round, I will be doing two single crochet in each row around. At the end, I should have 12 stitches total. I tend to use the tail from the magic ring at the very beginning as my stitch marker. And I just bring it up and lay it over at the very first stitch in between uh, my hook and the stitch. That way I know when to stop if I happen to lose count. So I will finish up those 12 stitches and meet you back here. And then when I'm at the end, I just count around to make sure that I didn't make any mistakes. I, you can see here I am pulling the tail from the magic ring right up against the stitches I just completed and the stitch that I will be going into next. I am using that as my stitch marker. You can also use pins or um, another piece of colored yarn if you would like to have some contrast, but I just use that tail because I'm used to it. For round two, we'll be doing two single crochet in the first stitch and then one single crochet in the next stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. I will complete that row and meet you back here at the end. Okay, so here I am just counting to make sure that I have 18 stitches. On the next row, I will do two single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next two stitches around for a total of 24 stitches. And right here, I'm moving my stitch marker so that if I lose count, I know where I started. I will meet you at the end of the row.
for round four, I will do two single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next three stitches around for a total of 30. I will work on that and meet you at the end. Okay, so that marks the end of the increase rows. As you can see here, the magic ring in the middle still has a bit of a gap, so I'm gonna pull it really tight right here to keep the top of it closed. And then this next row and the three after it will only be one single crochet in each stitch around. So for rows five, six, seven, and eight, four rows total, one single crochet all the way around. You will notice that the uh, the work starts to curve up on itself and that is what we want. We want it to end up like a little ball at the end. So I will work on those four rows and then I will meet you at the end of those four. Okay, I've moved my stitch marker and right here I went to insert my hook into the next stitch to continue around but what you want to do is actually insert your hook for this row in the front loop only of the first and the second stitches. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. That is called an invisible decrease of course there are videos out there if you uh, want to pause this and go watch others on how to do that or comment below and let me know if you would like for me to show you that um, maybe in a better camera angle or uh, slower so basically insert through the front loops only of the next two stitches so you have three hoops on your um, hook yarn over pull through the loops we are going to, for round nine, decrease over two stitches and then single crochet into the next three all the way around, resulting in 24 stitches when you're done. I will finish up this row nine and meet you at the end. Okay, for row 10, I am moving my stitch marker once again. For row 10, we will decrease over two stitches in single crochet into the next two stitches, resulting in 18 all the way around. 
once I complete that, I will meet you at the end and we get to do some of the exciting things. So right here I went ahead and skipped to roll 11. Um, roll 11 is to decrease over two stitches and single crochet into the next stitch and repeat all the way around to reduce to 12 stitches total. Um, you can choose to do that before you insert the safety eyes or after. It doesn't really matter. It's just what you're comfortable with with the polyfill. So as soon as I am finished up with row 11 here, I will um, meet you back at the end. Okay, so these are the six millimeter safety catch eyes. They are not recommended for children, at least under two, but I'm not quite sure what the official packaging says. Um, but basically we have six millimeter eyes. And what I kind of do is I look at the round shape of the head and I go about halfway down. So if I imagine it being perfectly round, I insert one eye halfway down. On the inside of it, you'll take the safety catch and put it on the inside. And you'll, of course, want to do this before you stuff. Right here, I am pulling out the last stitch that my hook was on, and I'm just making it bigger so that I can kind of fiddle around with this without pulling out any stitches that I've already done. Okay, so then once the one eye is in, I look at the row that that eye is on and I just drag my finger a few stitches over and I insert the second one. Take a look at it and see if it looks cute to you. Uh, sometimes the further apart they are, the more adorable they are. So um, before you put the safety catch on it, you can take it out, move it around, that kind of thing just to make sure that it is where you want it to be because once they're on there, I don't think they're coming off. Okay, eyes are in. So then I use polyfill for my stuffing for my amigurumi dolls. Um, you can use a variety of materials for this. It does not have to be polyfill. You could use yarn scraps. You could use fabric scraps, clothing that you intend to throw away that you could strip up into fabric stuffing strips or whatever you want, um, but I just use polyfill for these. Um, I do have quite a few fabric scraps that I do intend to use once I'm out of polyfill, but these bags make so many of these dolls that it's, you know, I've probably only purchased two bags in the entire time that I've been making these, so it really lasts a long time. So you'll take a, a handful of the polyfill and stuff it in. And you want to make sure that you put in more than you think you need because over time and with handling the polyfill collapses and you don't want it to look baggy so you want to stuff it in there really good use your finger to tuck it in around the edge of the ball and then after i've got most of it filled up i will take cotton ball sized chunks and just kind of work them in to fill in any other gaps that I might have. And as I'm stitching around, you can always add in more polyfill if you feel like it could take some more. Um, Cause like I said, over time it collapses anyway. So you wanna make sure you have a little more in there than usual. Right here, I was gonna cut this out, but then I figured that somebody might benefit from this. Right here, the four ply yarn has split and so what I'm gonna do is pull that stitch out and reinsert my hook in here to make sure that it has caught all of the threads of the yarn and then just restitch that one. I'm gonna move my stitch marker 
and then for the remainder of the head I'm going to continue to decrease all the way around until it is closed it does get very tight the smaller and smaller that it gets so just take your time if you feel like you need to just insert a single crochet to release some of the tension um, you can go ahead and do that um, but I for the most part after row 11 I try to do two de or a decrease over two stitches all the way around unless it's super super tight the goal for this part is to make sure that the space between the stitches stays really tight so that you don't get gaps where the polyfill come out towards the bottom. Once I'm finished with completing the head, I am going to stitch it all the way closed. Right here I'm grabbing my scissors and I'm going to leave a pretty good tail, maybe eight inches, maybe six. And I'm just going to pull the tail of that yarn all the way out so that it is tied up in a knot. Okay, so now I've got the tail at the bottom. I've got the original tail from the magic circle at the top. I'm just kind of straightening out my eyeballs here. And then you can use your yarn needle or your crochet hook to weave in the ends from the head. And you can choose to do this a variety of ways. Every time I do it, I do it a little different. Um, it's just kind of up to you. I think the pattern says to um, weave in the ends for the head, so you can weave them in. Right here I'm showing um, how to do it with the yarn needle. You want one with a pretty big eye on it to get all that yarn through it. And then I just weave the needle through the stuffing all the way through the head so that if it comes out in one spot it's not going to come out in another and I just do that until I feel like it's been secured a few times through inserting back through the hole in which I stuck the needle through to begin with until I get to the top so right here, I'm going to take the two ends, the magic circle end and the one from the bottom, and I'm just going to tie them up in a knot. And I'm doing this so that the doll itself has a hook that I can use to hang on a tree. Because the pattern is for an ornament, that's how I'm making this. If you intend to make this a little pocket-sized doll and not have it be an ornament, you would just weave in both of these ends and it wouldn't have a hook at the top at all. You could always take a Christmas hook or a Christmas ornament hook and feed it through the stitches on the top if you feel like later on you wanted to add um, a hoop for hanging. So then I just trim the ends and the head is complete. So cute. Okay, using my size F hook, I have switched yarn colors. I am now on the Cafe Latte color. I will be beginning this, the body of the child, the same way that I started the head. So you start with a magic circle or a magic ring. Then I will single crochet six into the middle of the magic ring and then cinch it to close. Row one is to do a, um, a single crochet two times into each stitch. So two single crochet into each stitch around, resulting in 12. I will meet you back here at the end after I have completed the magic circle, magic ring, and the two single crochets into each stitch around. Okay, for row two, I will do two single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then repeat that pattern all the way around. I will have 18 stitches at the end, and I will meet you at the end of row two. Okay, for row three, I will do two single crochet in the first stitch and one single crochet in the next two stitches, repeating all the way around. I should have 24 stitches by the time I am done, and I will meet you back there at the end.
row four, move your stitch marker. The pattern is two single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next three stitches around, and repeat that pattern until you have 30 stitches. I will meet you at the end. Okay, this is our last increase row. The pattern is two single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next four stitches, repeating the pattern around for a total of 36 stitches. I'll see you at the end of row five. For row six, we are not going to put our hook into both um, loops. You will only insert your hook into the back loop. And for row six, in the back loop only, you will stitch 36 single crochet all the way around. So once you get to the end, you can see here how that stitching only in the back stitch creates a little bit of a ridge all the way around. And that effect is going to be the bottom of the body of the child. So it's not really gonna sit flat and it wasn't intended to, but it just puts a little bit of an extra detail there. Um, so then for rows seven, eight, and nine, you will stitch through both loops and there will just be one single crochet in each stitch around. So for 36 stitches all the way around, rows seven, eight, and nine will only be one single crochet. I'll meet you back at the end for round 10.
Okay, so I have just completed one single crochet for round seven and I, oh, seven and eight. And I like to keep track of these repeated rows like this because sometimes I have to stop and go do something else and come back to it. So I like to put down just little reminders on a scratch piece of paper or a sticky note just to remind myself of which rows I've completed and which ones I still need to do. So that's what I was um, showing you there. I'll see you for round 10. Okay, so for round 10, you will be decreasing over two stitches. So instead of going through both loops or the back loop, you will insert two through the front loops only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. That is going to take two stitches and make them one. So then you will just single crochet into the next four stitches after that resulting in a round with 30 stitches total. So I'll repeat that one more time. You'll decrease over two stitches and then one single crochet in the next four stitches, repeating all the way around for 30 stitches. And I will meet you at the end. Okay, so here you can see how the bottom of the ornament is starting to take on a cup shape. That is what we want. You can see how the ridge really defines the bottom portion of the body from the upper portion. So then moving on to row 11, we are going to decrease over two stitches, one single crochet in the next three stitches and repeat all the way around for a total of 24. I'll see you at the end. Okay, moving the yarn marker here from the magic ring tail at the beginning. Row 12 is to decrease over two stitches, one single crochet in the next two stitches, and repeat all the way around for a total of 18. I will see you at the end.
At the end of row 12, you will take the, um, the stitch that you just completed, pull your hook out, and make that loop really big so that you can um, not pull out any stitches that you've already worked on. And then stuff the body with the polyfill the same way that we did with the head. And the same goal here as before is to stuff it extra tight, really get it all the way into all of the nooks and crannies. I like to use my fingers to push it towards the outside of the work in the stitching, leaving a, a hole in the middle. And then like here, you can see how there's still plenty of room in there for some more polyfill. So. That's what I will do for this one, and I will meet you back here for row 13. Okay, row 13, decrease over two stitches and one single crochet in the next stitch and repeat all the way around until you have 12 stitches. After that, you're just going to continue to close the opening of the body and stuff it with polyfill until it feels tight. Once it's closed, you're going to leave a really long tail and you're going to use that tail to connect the head to the body and um, if you chose not to make a head loop with the green yarn, you can now do that with the brown. It's totally up to you. Just using your yarn ne uh, needle, you can feed that all the way up through the head and make sure that both pieces are secured together. Um, in the pattern, there are pictures to go along with this. And um, if you want to purchase that pattern, you are welcome to do so. There will be a link in the description box below to my, my shop, so make sure you check that out as well. Um, as soon as I am done closing it up, I will meet you back here for assembly. Okay, right here I have finally closed up the opening and I have clipped the yarn. I'm pulling out my stitch marker and I still have a little bit of a gap right here. So I'm just going to take my crochet hook and I'm going to do something called a whip stitch all the way around that opening where I just feed it through the middle and through the outside, over the middle and through the outside. And when I pull that really tight, it just cinches that opening. Then I can take my crochet hook or my yarn needle, or like I'm showing here, a combination of both. And you're just going to either weave in those ends or use it to connect your two pieces together with your yarn needle. You can then feed that all the way up through to the top of the head and use that also to tie to make a loop. It's totally up to you. There is no right or wrong way to do that. Here I have secured the two end pieces with a knot. I am pulling them through with my crochet hook to hide the tails. And then this piece is upside down as of right now. You can see where the ridge is going around here where we stitched in the back loops. And um, so that's going to be the bottom part.
Okay, now we are going to make the ears in the pattern. We're going to start with a magic ring and we are going to single crochet into the middle of the magic ring three times, resulting in three stitches. Once we have those three, we'll begin row one, and row one is to do three single crochet into each stitch around, still resulting in three. And that does seem repetitive, but the reason for this is that the double stitches at the beginning here will really create a nice point to the ends of the ears. So I'm just pulling it real tight here, counting around to make sure that I'm inserting my crochet hook into the right loops. And I will just single crochet once into each stitch around. So my fingers are a little bit in the way of the camera, but you can see here how I'm kind of flipping the ear to the right side out. And I did that by pulling the tail and those first initial three stitches from the magic ring, the magic, uh, yeah, the magic ring, um, so that you can really see that point. For row, row two, I'm going to do two single crochet into each stitch around for a total of six stitches. And for this row, I just counted in my head, but if you want to use your stitch marker, you can uh, use your tail from the magic ring here as well. Um, I'm just pulling it real tight to make sure that it looks good. Then for row three, I will do two single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in each stitch around after that, and repeat the pattern for a total of nine stitches. And I didn't say it before, but you're gonna make two ears, obviously. Okay, moving the stitch marker. Row four, I will do two single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next two stitches around, and repeat until I have 12 stitches total. I'm just checking my pattern here to make sure that it's right. little side story on where I got the pattern for the ears. Um, I, after playing around with it for a little bit and noticing how floppy mine were, I didn't like them. So I was searching for a kind of pointy ear and I saw a crochet corgi on Pinterest and I loved the way that the ears laid so well. They were pointed, they were cute, I just loved them, they were adorable. So I looked up the pattern and I adapted it for the larger uh, Baby Yoda, the child dolls, and for the tiny one. So if I were making ears for the bigger doll, I would just double all of the numbers for making the ears. And then when they're finished, you fold them in half and they create a really, really nice point and a nice, um, they're nice and stiff and they don't flop down. Okay, once I'm done with row four, I'm done increasing for the ears. For rows five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, I'm going to just do one single crochet in each stitch around, and then I'm going to leave a long tail for sewing into the head when I'm finished. So I will meet you at the end of round 10, and we will, um, I, I think I made the second one off camera, so just um, pretend you saw me make two.
Okay, I have completed two ears with the exact same pattern. When I'm done, I just make sure and align them that they are approximately the same length, um, just in case I lost count or whatever. Leaving a long tail, pulling it all the way out so that it's secured. And now here you can see all of the final pieces. I've got the body. I have taken some extra thread and I'm going to use that thread to, or some extra yarn, I'm gonna use that to connect all of my, or uh, I'm gonna use that to connect the body to the head. If you left a long tail, you can use that to complete this portion, but I, um, I didn't, so I just had to cut an extra piece of yarn to do the sewing together, and that's what you're seeing here. So I'm just securing these in and creating a nice tight knot so that the yarn doesn't come out. And then the head is going to just sit right on top of the body. I kind of squish it down a little bit. Um, because there's no neck, you want to make sure that your stitches are hidden, but that they are effective in securing the head to the body. There are some really good videos out there of how to attach body parts in amigurumi. If you would like for me to show you some of that, just leave a comment below or you can message me on one of my social media sites. I am on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Tumblr, and um, currently my shop is on eBay. So any of those platforms, you can reach out to me. Um, so right here, I'm just kind of using some sewing techniques to hand stitch this body to the head. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. Um, I just try to make sure that my stitches are hidden. So once the head and the body are attached, I will meet you back here. Okay, we have a half of a Yoda doll. So right here, I um, because I left a long tail on the ears, I just fed that extra yarn onto my yarn needle again. And my way of placing the ears is fairly simple. I just put each ear on opposite ends of the face. So if I'm looking straight on to the doll, the ears are going to go on the um, I guess the vertical planes on either side and I try to find um, equidistant from the eyeballs so that the ears look fairly regular on each side. I begin by inserting the yarn uh, needle uh, right where I want the ears to lay. So I did that at the first. I've got my first stitch in to kind of secure it and now I'm just going around all of the edges to make sure that it is secure. And I just kind of mold it with my fingers. And like I had said at the beginning, the ears, um, they appear to be double-sided, but they're really just a tube and then we squished it to sew it in there flat. And I just weave in the ends until I feel like they're on there pretty good and then I clip it. If there's little hairs or whatever sticking out you can tuck those back in and then right here I had a tuck with the with the yarn on the opposite side of the head because I pulled it too tight if that happens you just take your crochet hook or your yarn needle and just kind of pop it back out um, these dolls are fairly resilient that way you're not really gonna mess it up so that's what I did and then I'm just gonna do the other ear right here I, um, I'm gonna do a better job of showing you where I kind of do some placement for the ear. So I'm looking at the other side, I'm looking in relation to the eyes, and I want it to go about there. So I'm gonna take my yarn needle and I'm gonna insert it in that same plane from the bottom to the top, and that's kind of where I want my ear to go. It's right there. So I'm gonna pull it all the way through, hold it up there, 
and then secure it with some stitches. There are some crafters out there that will take some sewing pins or some other kinds of um, material to hold those pins in place while you're sewing. If you feel like you need to do that, absolutely go ahead and do it. Um, it would probably make my life easier, but I don't do it, so it's just a personal preference. So here we are, securing the bottom stitches of the ear to the head. Um, with the bigger Yoda dolls, I really like to create a little bit of a, a curved effect with the ear. I think I've kind of subconsciously done that with these ears as well. Just gives a little bit more dimension and interest to the ear itself. So right now you could stop um, with the ornament if you were done, but I went ahead and did the extra little piece of making this ornament really look like the baby Yoda in the Mandalorian. So I have made a little bit of a cowl to go around his neck. And you would do that by just chain stitching 30. Um, you can stop at 20 and just kind of wrap it around the neck of the ornament and see if that's going to be long enough to have a bit of an overlap, but I find that 30 is a little bit uh, more to what I want it to look like, so you're just going to chain 30. I'll meet you back when I've done that. Okay, so right here you can see I'm wrapping it around the neck just to make sure I've got that nice overlap that I'm looking for. I'm gonna pull it back off the doll. And then when I go to stitch the other way, I'm going to um, do half double crochet, which is to yarn over and into the third hook from the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So yarn over, insert, yarn over again, pull all through all three. And I'm doing a half double crochet instead of the single crochet that's listed in the pattern because this goes a little faster. Um, you could even do double crochet if you don't want to spend the time doing it. Um, but I find that the half double crochet still does a really tight stitch, but um, it goes just a little faster than the single crochet. Okay, when you reach the end of the first row across, you're going to chain one, and then at the very end, you're actually going to do a single crochet around the end of your cowl, and then turning the work around to the other side, you're going to do a row of half double crochet all the way down the other end. Once you're finished, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I'm going to get to the end, do one final single chain to kind of knot everything off, and then I'm going to leave another long tail so that I can use my yarn needle and weave in the ends for the cowl. So you have a couple of options here. I'm just snipping off the little tail. I worked that in on the under, sorry, the back side of the um, cowl when I did the second row of half double crochets. 
Um, you can either leave it out and snip it or weave it in or crochet it inside the way that I did. I can definitely do a tutorial of that if you are interested. Okay, so I have threaded the long tail onto my yarn needle and I am just folding over the ends of the cowl to make it look like his little shirt or jacket. And then I am going to just put some tack stitches straight down through the two layers of the cowl and attach it directly to the body of the baby Yoda. Then just like the other pieces, I'm going to do a few just securing stitches to make sure that it is going to stay in place. Okay, so after just making some final adjustments, I'm gonna grab my pink pastel and just rub a little bit of color to the inside of his ears to give that final little unique detail that doesn't require a whole lot of extra work. And he's done, look how cute. Oh my goodness, he's so adorable. What kind of amazing gift would this be for your favorite Star Wars fan this holiday season? He can hang from an ornament display or from a tree or just so cute in a box or maybe as part of a gift basket with some other Star Wars things. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or other things that you would love to see, please let me know. Thank you.